Hi, in this video, I'm looking at graphing the function y equals x squared divided by x take 2. This is a rational function. We know that because it's the ratio between these two functions, x squared and x minus 2, x squared divided x minus 2. So that we can refer to each part of our function, I'm going to write them as p of x and q of x. Now to graph one of these, what we want to do is we want to look at things like asymptotes and intercepts. So I'm going to start off with our uh, first kind of asymptote, a vertical asymptote, and see if there's one of those. A vertical asymptote occurs when the denominator becomes zero. So I want to know when my x minus 2 equals zero. And that's quite easy to work out. We just add 2 to both sides and we know that we're going to have an vertical asymptote at x equals 2. Now the other asymptote occurs based on the relationship between our two functions and we look at the highest degree of my two functions. So the p of x has a degree of 2 and q of x has a degree of 1. And normally when the p of x, the top degree is higher than the lower degree, we don't have an asymptote at all. But this is a special case where p of x is exactly one degree higher than q of x. So I have a slant asymptote, a slant asymptote or oblique asymptote in this function. So what that means is that as x approaches a really big number, a really big negative number, then my function actually approaches some linear function, which will be an asymptote. So it'll approach that line, but never quite reach it. So all I got to do is work out that equation. And what we do is we do that by working out the division that is actually going on here. So I'm actually trying to divide these two polynomials. So I've got x squared divided by x minus 2. And I'm going to use the long division method to do this. So I, what I want to do is I just focus on the two highest terms. And in both of these, how many times does x go into x squared? Well, x times x gives me x squared. So it goes in x times. And then I want to multiply this by what I'm dividing by to see what my remainder is. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. And I'm going to subtract that off of the row above. So I'm just going to chuck on the plus 0 that's hiding there. x squared take x squared gives us 0. 0 take negative 2x is 0 plus 2x. So I have 2x there. So my remainder is plus 2x. So now I'm going to see if I can divide x into 2x, which I can, because x goes into 2x two times. So we have plus 2 up here. So now to work out my remainder, 2 times x is 2x. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. And then I'm going to subtract that off. So I'm going to bring a plus 0 down, subtract that off. 2x take away 2x is 0, and 0 take negative 4 is plus 4. Now I can't divide x into 4, so this is my remainder from my division. And I don't need to worry too much about that remainder. This means that x squared over x minus 2 is this, x plus 2 plus our remainder 4 over our original x minus 2. But as x approaches a really, really, really big number, we just this term here is going to approach 0 as x approaches um, infinity, or plus or minus infinity, because I'm just going to divide by a really, really big number, so it's just going to approach 0. So I don't worry about that term, and I just say that my my slant asymptote, therefore, is this x minus 2. So my slant asymptote is at y equals x plus 2. So that gives me my slant asymptote. I've got my vertical asymptote. Now I can have a look and see if there are any intercepts. So let's have a look at the y-intercept. 
So that's when x equals 0. So if I put x equals 0 into there, I get 0 squared over 0 take 2. And that's just 0. So I have a y-intercept at the origin. And see if there's any zeros. So there are my x-intercepts. There's another name for those. And they occur when y equals 0. So putting y equals 0 into my equation, I've got 0 equals x squared over x minus 2, which gives us 0 equals x squared, so x equals 0. So I only have an x-intercept at the origin as well. So now I know my intercepts, I know my asymptotes, I can now prepare my graph. So let's create up a set of axes. Okay, and now let's put in my asymptote. So I've got my vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So I'm going to have a vertical line at x equals 2. And coming down here. And I've got my slope, my slanting asymptote at y equals x plus 2. So that means that it's got a gradient of 1 and a y-intercept of 2. So it's going to meet there, and it's going to have a gradient of 1. So it's also going to meet at negative 2. So that gives me a sloping intercept here at x equals negative 2. Okay, so I have my vertical intercept at x equals 2. I've got my slant intercept, which is the equation y equals x plus 2. And I have an x and a y intercept at the origin. So now I have everything I need to be able to draw my graph. So let's have a look at doing that. And let's have a look. So I've got to look at either side of my vertical intercept and my root just to see what's going on. So let's first focus on what's going to happen with my graph when x is less than zero. So what happens to my equation when I'm to the left of my x-intercept, my zero? So my graph is going to be based around p of x, which was x squared, and q of x, which was x minus 2. And I want to think about what happens to these functions as x is smaller than 0. So x squared is a number gets smaller, that's just going to stay positive. And x minus 2, as we get less than 0, it's going to be negative. Now my function is p over q, so if I've got a positive divided by a negative, my overall function means that y is going to be less than zero. So overall, I'm going to be negative. So my graph is going to stay below that axis. And as the x gets closer and closer to infinity, it's going to get closer and closer to that slant asymptote. So that means that my graph is going to slant curve from here away from the asymptote and approach my zero. Then I want to look at what happens between my zero and my asymptote. So that's the next bit over. So let's have a look at that part. So that's between, that's when x is between 0 and 2. What happens to my two functions? Well, p of x, it's x squared. So as x gets bigger, it's also going to get bigger. So it's going to stay positive. q of x, however, let's have a look at what's going to happen to it between 0 and 2. Between 0 and 2, we're always taking 2 off of it. So it's going to stay negative. So that means that overall I've still got a positive divided negative so my function is going to stay as negative and as I get closer and closer to 2 I'm going to curve towards my vertical asymptote which means that this graph curves down now from here towards my asymptote at x equals 2. Now I've just got to look at what happens on the right hand side of x equals 2, my asymptotes. So this is when x is greater than 2, what happens to my function? Okay, well, p of x, that's x squared, so it's going to always be positive. 
q of x, well, we're only ever subtracting 2 off of q of x, so if we're bigger than 2, we're always going to stay positive, so that's positive. So that means that overall, positive divided positive stays positive. And not only that, we've got to now work out which side of this line are we on. So if we're both positive, I need to make sure that I never reach a negative zone. And if I think about it, if I'm under the slant asymptote, but on this side of the vertical asymptote, as x gets greater and greater to zero, I'm going to keep getting bigger and bigger, so I'll approach this slant asymptote. But as x approaches 2, that means I'm going to approach this line, and the only way it goes is down to negative infinity. But I want, don't want to go to negative, I want to be positive, which means that it's going to approach positive infinity, and the only way it's going to do that is if it stays on top of my slant asymptote. So my graph is going to curve like that. So it's going to avoid that asymptote and avoid that asymptote, but get very, very close to them. So that becomes the graph of y equals x squared over x minus 2. If I did these all in the same color as we should, I would have a curve that looks like that.